This is Life Rewired, the Brain Injury Podcast, for survivors, by survivors. And now your hosts, Rob and Ashley. Hi, welcome to Life Rewired. I'm Rob, and Ashley is still off. She will be back very soon. Joining me today is Amber Lorette. She is an author and also a brain injury survivor. Hi, Amber. Hi, how are you? Great. How are you doing? I'm good. Awesome. So let's first start into how did you actually acquire your brain injury? Yeah, so um, it's an interesting story, which I'm sure all of us have, but I was at a dairy bar with my daughters and uh, we just sat down. We were having ice cream and some food and there was a gust of wind and um, it picked up you know, going back to the story brings up some, you know, feelings. So, um, Mm -hmm. it, the patio picnic umbrellas that they had in their picnic tables weren't secured properly or at all, I guess. And so it picked up the umbrella and it hit me in the back of the head, knocking me unconscious. And, um, I don't really remember a whole lot, but my friend who was with me, she's a nurse and, um, she said the umbrellas were flying everywhere. So. Goodness. So what kind of struggles do you actually have with your brain injury? Um, so I have lots of struggles. Um, I have memory loss. I have irritability, um, PTSD, um, you know, I, um, I have brain fog and brain fatigue. I struggle mm-hmm. with being able to really make it through the day without having to rest or take time away. I cannot yeah. do a lot of noise. Um, I have no peripheral vision and actually I have really bad mm. blurred vision. So, um, I'm not really allowed to drive anymore, only like up to 30 minutes in a day. I have migraines. Gotcha. uh, Lots and lots of Mm. different things. I sympathize with you on the migraines. I've had a migraine since the day I hit my head, and it just does not go away. (laughs) Oh, that's Some days it's easy to fake it with a smile, and some days it's not. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's easy for a lot of us to fake it with a smile sometimes. It is. And some days it's easier than others. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a friend of ours, a mutual friend, Don Corbelli, she's been on the show before as well. Very sweet lady. And she is the one who told me about your book. Um, First of all, what inspired you to to, uh, write your book? Um, so I was taken out of work two years ago. I'm a nurse and I'm actually a psychiatric nurse. I worked with behavioral health patients. Um, and there was a lot of transition happening due to COVID and Mm. everything. So just the transition alone was causing a lot of increase in my symptoms. It's hard to transition when you like to follow a schedule with brain injury. And, um, yeah, so, um, just everything that was happening and my vision issues, my doc was like, you know, you really can't do this anymore. So, um, I had a lot of different feelings and emotions. A lot of it was anger at first being taken out of work Mm. and, um, also worry, you know, financially, everybody worries when something like that happens. So I wrote already, I wrote a lot of poems and, um, a lot of my feelings have been written in I have notebooks and journals everywhere. So um, as I was, I don't know, it was one day I was just sitting there and I was writing a lot and um, I just was kind of like, oh, you know what I'm going to do? Write a book. <laughs> so um, I, I just felt it was necessary to kind of get the word out there and, and spread the awareness yeah. that needs to be, you know, people look at you and they're like, why are you out of work? You look completely fine. It doesn't make sense Mm -hmm. to me. And that caused a lot of frustration and anger. So, um, I thought I'm going to take 
a lot of what I've written already out of my journals and, and talk more about it. That's awesome. And yeah, I think, I think we all get daily. Well, you look fine. I just got that today. I went to, to Coles yeah. to buy a few shirts and I was having troubles with my numbers because um, my numbers come out weird. Like I can count up to nine and then it's one, zero, one, 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 two. So I was struggling with that. And she says, well, you seem like you're doing pretty good with considering them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, you don't know what you don't know, you yeah. know? And, yeah, and that's a good way to put it for sure. When, you know, I used to get very upset when people would say that to me. or, But obviously somebody who doesn't right. know, how can you get angry at them? Which is, again, a big part of my book. It needs to be better understood. And mm -hmm. um, just, I think it's very important. Because even as a nurse, I didn't know what I didn't yeah. know until I've been through it. And so it's, I think, a very difficult thing for somebody to go through and caregivers. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's really important that we kind of spread that awareness. Yes, the caregivers are the unsung heroes. Yeah, so let's, let's dive into this book. I would like to know more about this. Um, what's the book about? And... Let's go from there. So the title is Invisible, which I think is very fitting. You know, it definitely is an invisible disability. Um, but with that also, it's uh, finding purpose and spiritual awakening, you know, through the darkness of uh, brain injury. And it's really, it talks about the struggles um, before actually I was hit by the umbrella a year before I was hit by a drunk driver. Oh, wow. And that didn't cause the brain injury. It caused neck injuries and back injuries. I had to have surgery. Mm. Um, and so, it, you know, it talks about that piece and then going into the accident of what caused my brain injury. Um, it talked about all my struggles, you know, the, um, frustrations, the anger and how my family and I, you know, it caused the separation. I have four mm. kids and, um, it caused us to really kind of spiral down for a long time before I really started it, it to accept my brain injury. Yeah. And, through the acceptance of my brain injury, I then learned that, it, you know, what other people said doesn't really matter or how they view it doesn't matter so much as how I see myself and view myself. Mm -hmm. And um, all I can do is spread that awareness and help people to understand. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it talks a lot about again, the struggles and everything, but then goes into what I have done to help myself. Um, you know, what, and even really not conforming to a society of Western medicine and going more onto the holistic approach because that's what's worked for me. And I think that's important too, for anybody yeah. that you have to really do what works for you, not what we're told. Works. This is so true. What kind of treatments have you found that has helped you? So on the holistic side, um, really, it's a lot of um, holistic remedies. It's it's not the traditional medication. I did do the traditional meds, and um, I'm still working on getting off of a few. But I really do think they cause worse side effects than I have to agree yeah. benefits. Um, Yep. So I have done a lot of um, different remedies. It's plant medicine, basically, but also yoga, meditation, journaling, support groups. I definitely think mm. that um, anybody with a brain injury should be in support groups because well, they are support yeah. groups, but they but it's nice to feel understood. Yes. Um, 
and nature. Nature is a big one for me, grounding into the earth, um, acupuncture, massage therapy, relaxation, hypnotherapy, um, neurofeedback. Um, I'm trying to think of others, but just to name a few. No, <laughs> I did try the acupuncture. I mean, really, it's... and um, it, it did work some for me. It did reduce it just a tad, but it it wasn't a complete healing for me. But I, I'm totally for that. Yeah, I think, um, and that's the thing too I, in my book also, and. Um, just to, you know, I do these things as much as possible and, and I, but it's effort. It's a lot mm -hmm. of effort and there's no easy fix to it. And there's, you know, I actually just wrote something today to help people understand too, because even though there's those good days and things are working, you, there's still very bad days and there's days when you just can't get out of your own way. So I think too, um, just being very compassionate and um showing yourself love and understanding not being so hard on yourself for a long time when i needed naps or i needed to lay down i, I would get angry with myself uh -huh. um, and now it, i've worked on that through just being compassionate and understanding yeah and therapy Yes, absolutely. Now, do you find that you are able to recognize that you need to take some downtime or do you, does people have to say, Hey, Amber, you've overdone it. You need to slow down and, and rest. Um, it depends on the day. <laughs> so, yep. Uh, and I think it can be tricky because if I have a couple really good days and then, you know, like say I have a good three days. And then by the fourth day, I'm still trying to go at that same mm -hmm. pace. I will forget like, Hey, you have to stop. You have to take a rest. Mm -hmm. You have to. So sometimes I'll have to be reminded other times I am able to recognize. And, it, and that depends too. I do find through yoga and meditation, I'm more in my body and, and I'm able to recognize those signs. But if I'm you know, if I go a couple of days without doing yoga or meditation, then I fall back into that um, trap of thinking I'm I'm all healed and everything's all better. Yeah, it catches up with you. Yes, it does. Yeah. I was telling someone, uh, might have been my wife, I can't remember. Um, no, I, that uh, it was someone at a store today. I said, you know, every day is a question mark. You know, brain mm -hmm. injuries are not. They don't conform to a little box. You can't, I mean, yes, th this is a brain injury and, and these are the symptoms, but there's, it's so much more. It's, they're like snowflakes, no two are alike. And what's bothering me today? That's a great Might way. not bother me tomorrow. <laughs> yes. And actually that's interesting because, um, you know, I was off social media for a very long time and then I got back on, I felt you know, comfortable enough to be there. And I, I made a post today because I noticed I was posting pictures of all the good things, you know, the kayaking, the hiking and this, and then I wanted to make sure I was still being authentic to myself. And I um, told a story about last weekend, how my symptoms were very, very high. I woke up and I had a migraine. I just wasn't feeling well. I was dizzy. And kind of spiraled the day we had plans to go to a graduation party and we weren't able to and which caused my husband and I to have an argument because sometimes he doesn't quite get it and so I think it's important um like you said each day is a question mark you do not know what your brain is going to mm -hmm. do and so and that's hard too, you know, for people. And I, and I talk about that in my book that again, it, it's really about living in the present moment because you just, you can't predict it. And if you try to, you will just live in anger and frustration. Mm -hmm. What's the old saying? Uh, Men make plans and God laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> so you just have to take one day at a time. <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah.
all you really can right. do. Yeah, so you've got the book written and it's been published, right? Um, so how is all that going? Good. Um, it definitely was a lot of work. Um, you know, I, I did not think it would be as much work as it was, but it was. And um, the book launch was really nice. I, it's so, it's, it's such a beautiful thing to see everybody who comes out to support you. And um, I was emotional, so I didn't really speak a whole lot, but um, it also was a little overstimulating. And that's yeah. something, again, I forgot because I haven't challenged myself in over two years mm. to get overstimulated. And so um, that was a reminder like, hey, you did this, but you need to take a step back and and still take care of yourself. And, and that was interesting too, because all the work that was put into it and then the overstimulation and plus summers here now, which can be overstimulating, um, reminded me that I still have a lot of healing to do. Yeah. I think it's a lifetime of healing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. And, and I think as a, a survivor or again, caregivers, people in your life, it, I forget. So it's made me more mindful about them because of course they're going to forget that I still have a lot of healing because I, I forgot. Yeah. And so it's just easier for me to be reminded because yeah. then something happens like that, even though it was a very positive experience, it still kind of set me back a little bit. Oh, I could definitely see that. Yeah. Have you found that people it's like in your small circle, family members, what have you, they're the ones that don't understand it the most. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I don't. Um, yeah. And that can be so frustrating so frustrating because you know that they love mm. you and you love them. Um, but it's like, what aren't you getting? Right. Right. <laughs> it, it's, and it's kind of like, you see me the most, you see my struggles, um, and you still don't get it. It's right. It's an odd thing to live. Mm -hmm. Um, but, I, you know, I, sometimes it's very frustrating and I reach out to other survivors and I'm like, what do you do? <laughs> what do you say to them? Um, and it's just, you can only do what you can do to help them understand. This is so true. Um, it's, you know, they see the, the automobile, it still looks pristine and it has a bad motor. <laughs> it can't run very far, but you still see that, that beautiful car and you just can't quite get it in your head why it's not running. Yes. That's a great way to put yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but sometimes too, though, I think, um, with family, the ones very, you know, right here living in the home, I, I become frustrated though, because I'll say, Hey, you could join this support group for, you know, and, and caregivers are on there too. And they're kind of like, no, no, I got it. Like, I see you every day. I get it. Yeah. I'm like, no, you really don't. Yeah. I, I think it's easy for them to That's forget. That's frustrating. Mm -hmm. So to, where can we find your book? So it's um, my publisher. She's been really great. And that's on um, innerpeacepress.com. Uh, her website is pretty easy, I think. But um, she's just, she's been a really huge support in all of this. And she, of course, really enjoyed my story. And I've been connected with others in the group that have written about their brain injuries. Oddly <laughs> enough, it's so interesting how you end up with the people you're supposed to. Yeah, it is funny how God puts everybody in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're definitely going to, we'll connect at the bottom of the screen on YouTube will be a link to go to inner peace, inner peace press inner, dot com. Okay. So there will be a link at the bottom to for you to go to. And I'll also have a graphic on the screen for people to see how to get there. 
Um, what else would you like us to know about the book or any other things that you'd like to discuss before we go? Um, just for my book, really, it's, you know, I've had a few people read it that, um, well, a lot of people have read it that do not have a brain injury, but they know me and they have learned things from it that they didn't even realize they were struggling mm. with. And so it's, it's, it's very much about brain injury and, and the struggles, but at the same time, it's also about bringing community together and, and really learning how to be vulnerable. And I think that's a big thing for, especially adults. Yes. Um, it took me a long time to be vulnerable with my brain mm -hmm. injury. And of course that comes with acceptance, but I, I don't have to announce it to everybody. Hey, I'm, you know, I have brain injury, so bear with me. No, but I can be vulnerable and in the moment say, I'm trying to understand you. You know, I would steer away from conversations or groups or really even leaving my house because I couldn't keep up with what was happening and nobody knew why. And I didn't want to explain it. Yeah. And so now, you know, my book talks about that. Just being vulnerable with people really sets you free, but but also brings you to people who you didn't even think you'd talk to. And so it's just important that we allow ourselves to be who we are authentically in our in our I don't know what the True. word I'm looking for, but that happens a lot. <laughs> yes. Yes. In yeah. our journey. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So yeah, if you'd like to know more, if you'd like to purchase the book, which I hope that you do click on the link below, there's a graphic on the screen that tells you how to get there. And also on the a link in the YouTube description and Amber, it has been such a great time talking with you today. Thank yes. you. I appreciate you. So until next time, this is Life Rewired. Have a good day.